study of the fool as we continue 19th series of the fool the 122nd fool of the bible is found in Ecclesiastes 7 4 the heart of the wise and that's always opposite of the fool is in the house of mourning but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth so we got two hearts here we got a wise heart we got a foolish heart and we got a the wise is in mourning and yet the fool is in mirth these expressions obtain a forcible meaning in the eastern tradition of extending both festive and mournful celebration throughout several days <clears throat> genesis 50 verse 10 Genesis 50, verse 10. And we see, there came a threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. Jacob died. Lamentations in the book after Jeremiah, just complete utter destruction of Jerusalem. I mean, Jacob's death, not only to his sons, but to the Egyptians and the people around. That's mourning. That's grief. Judges 14, 17. Judges 14, 17. And we read. And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him. And she told the rid and he told that. And she told the riddle to her children of her people. Now there wasn't really crying. She put the crocodile tears because she's been threatened by her people that some I mean that uh Samson has put forth a riddle. And there's boo-hoo tears and then there's real tears. The verse indicates that a life of enjoyment does not mean the rejection of ourselves to pleasure, but the thankful and clear head use of beginning a beautiful thing which God gives us. We need, believe it or not, we need mourning. And we need celebration but when we are on the mountain top we don't learn nothing and when we go into the valley that's where we depend upon God that's where we reach out for God there are more prayers being prayed inside the hospital walls then there are prayers in a, a place that's rented for a hall for wedding celebrations, for birthday parties, for any kind of celebration. And if you got a life of pure luxury, and I don't mean riches, I mean luxury and celebrations and partying, and that's like a person having too much sugar and end up with diabetes. So a wise person will go into mourning. He will go where people are upset, people are mournful. He will try to help. A fool will avoid the morning. I'm not ever going to have any tragedy, not going to have any problems in my life. Then you can't be a help, and then you can't be help. Ecclesiastes 7 5. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise, again, wise, and then we're going to have an opposite, than for a man to hear the song of fools. Songs of fools. Turn to any radio station in America and throughout the world. Look at any CD cover. There are people out there who sing, I love you. They don't mean it. They're just being paid. There have been carnal, worldly, unsaved people who have made an album of hymns so they can sucker the Christians. Oh, my favorite singer has... Oh, look at it. He must be right with God. He did a hymn album. It's better to hear the rebuke of a wise man 
than for a man to hear the song of fools and this goes close to us in our street ministry that we have on Saturdays. We have been overpowered. We have been lessened. While they have a DJ there, they pay. So I can't use amplification. I have been restricted by the song of a fool. And yet I am the wise man by the standards is I am trying to give them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am trying to give them the better hope and the eternal life that they can find out from the wise man how to believe, how to make God pleased with them only by the merit of Jesus Christ. And they got a fool over there to sing stupid songs about stupidity, alcohol, booze, and women, and all the kinds of nonsense that does not get you to God. And there have been people, you know, with, when we preach the gospel, you know, they go turn their car radios on. They go turn their CDs on. They turn their cassette tapes on. And you are rejecting the wise man with the Bible. Then they hear the songs of fools. There's a, there's a song out there. It's about Satan. I write the song. If you look at the words of that song, that's Satan. Satan was the music director. Songs about getting drunk, songs about fornicating, songs about adultery, songs about uh, drug pleasure are songs of fools and don't please God. Ecclesiastes 7 6. For, the, for as the crackling of thorns under a pot, have you ever been out campfire? You ever had an outdoor fire where you had wood and you've had sticks and they're on fire and you hear the crackling and the popping? That's what it is. So is the laughter of, of the fool. This also is vanity. It's vain. It's nothing. It's empty. It has no value. What is the crackling of the thorns of that wood being burned for the pot? It's absolutely nothing. It's air that has been trapped inside the wood, and when the fire gets to it, releases the air, and the air, poof, an extra amount of oxygen. But what's that do for the pot? What's that do for the stew? What's that do for the coffee or whatever that pot is holding? It does nothing. Pop, pop, pop. And there is no aim. There is no use for that air that's been trapped in the wood. As a fool and his laughter. Now remember, he's been in the house of Merv in Ecclesiastes 7.4. He's singing songs in 7.5. You see the fool, he's happy, he's joyful, but you don't see the fool when he's all by himself in his little apartment or his house. You don't see his comforts of alcohol, misery, maybe drugs, and no friends. Because as we've seen... 124 cases of a fool so far. Who would want to be with this person? Ecclesiastes 7 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. Anger and fools are together, it is their trait. Now the Bible says, Be ye angry. And sin not. The make a confession here. I have been the fool with anger. I would think if you were to be honest with yourself when it comes to anger, that you have been the fool. I think this fool here, as far as the sin, would affect all of us. And as my study going through the, through Moses, Moses was an angry man. And it led to him not going to the promised land. He got angry with the children of Israel. He smoked that rock when God spoke to him. He round up that rock. Oh, you know, you people, bam. We got a thing today. We got anger management. We got road rage. That's foolish. The Bible calls that foolish. You're going to be angry? Bible says be angry, but sin not. Calm down. Sit out. 
Think it over. Is it really worth being angry about? Ecclesiastes 7, 17. Be not over much wicked. Neither be thou foolish. Why should thou die before thy time? Don't be foolish. Foolishness causes early death. Now the wages of sin is death, the Bible says. But being foolish can put you in an early grave. And there's a joke out there, and it's, okay, it's a ha-ha, but you know what? How much is it true? Last words of somebody. Hey, watch this. A fool that does something foolish at the workplace ends up injuring himself and maybe killing himself or somebody else. How about a fool, though says on a package, drink responsibility, goes out, has too much to drink, and foolishly gets behind the wheel of a car and kills himself or kills an innocent family before their time. A fool will use tobacco products and bring himself an early death with the Surgeon General's warning on the package. A fool will decide that will defy the Bible and say, I will meet all kinds of women, all kinds of males for sexual pleasure, and yet a disease could end his life earlier. When God says a married bed, one man, one woman, husband and wife. A fool will cause himself an early grave, will cause himself death by the wages of sin is death because he will not listen to what God has written for us to do and not to do. The wages of sin is death, but his sins have brought an earlier death. And I believe through the scriptures, we're not going to look at it now, but you can cause yourself an early death. One of the things in the law was if your child won't obey his parents, he won't listen, he won't be corrected. They were to bring them to the elders and that child was be stoned to death as a rebellion. That's an early death. That's a foolish child. And we got tons of foolish children today in their sins and they're dying and they're killing each other. And yet the country says, why? Because you're raising a nation of fools. They had rejected God. Ecclesiastes 7.25 I applied my heart to know, Solomon, and to search, and to seek out wisdom. He's gone out looking. And the reason of things, and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness, so let's see what foolishness does. Foolishness is linked to madness. Now I'm not going to say all. Please do not say I say all. If you do, you have taken this tape and you have edited it. Not all, but many of your people who are mad and in psychiatric care is because they are a fool. They are involved with sin. Not all. Some. Please get that. Not all psychiatric is because being foolish and because of it. I mean, your body may be out of chem chemical. Your body may be out of whack. Yes, I take that for a fact. A person can be messed up. And I don't know any nicer word to say in their mind and all that. And it may not be from sin. It may not be something that they've done just may be chemistry. And I, I'm going to shut up there because I'm getting myself in trouble. But I'm saying is, there can be a person who is not well, and it could be their body. I hope I cleared that up. And there are people who are not well, who are sick, who are mental, who have all these problems, and it's because of the foolishness things they've done and because of sin. Nothing more foolish to say that you having a problem with your body and you load your body up with prescription drugs even more, which have all kinds of side effects to make the side effects even more of a problem in your body than what you had. The biggest thing today with children and parents in psychology is the biggest problem is you don't beat them on the behind 
with, with a rod like the Bible, you give them a drug, and then you give a drug to counteract the drug because of the side effects, and then you give them another drug because of the side effects of those drugs, and you got a messed up children. And the Bible said correction. So you've got a drugged out children today because they are on legalized drugs. And many of them have not even been tested to prove though they be of the government. Has there been enough time to study? Plenty of drugs that say, okay, this, we approved this drug in two years, three years, four years, five years down the road. Uh oh, we shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. So madness for some can be because of sin and foolishness. Ecclesiastes 9, 17. The words of a wise man are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. A rowdy and ridiculous addresses of him that ruleth among fools of a rich and strong but foolish man who have some effort upon fools like himself but is reasonably ignored and his words are unnoticed by wise men. When a fool talks, and he talks loud so he can declare his foolishness, him that cries that rules among fools, You've got a nation of fools today, and you've got people who cry out. I street preach. That is my public ministry. And I cry out to foolish people, and they will not listen. Though the Bible says, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. And I've had more results of dealing one-on-one -on -one with people. I've had more results sitting on the other side of a table of a prisoner in jail with salvation or a Bible issue than over a mass of people of fools. And you say, well, why do you do that then? That, I had a woman, why do you do it? Because the Bible says preach the gospel. Declared to all, and that's exactly what Jesus done. That's exactly what the apostles done. And you will get people will step out like that woman, and she's all that she said. You know, you 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 scare tactics, and you scream at the people. I said, yeah, but let me ask you one question. She goes, what? I said, it got your attention, didn't it? And if there will be someone right or wrong, sinner or saved, will come out and say, I want to talk to you. And you don't have an argument like that woman had with me. And you want to get right. And you want to, then you know what? I'm not screaming at that point. I'm dealing in quiet tone, one-on-one. -on -one. I've had that happen. Listen, the Bible says, and we'll get to that in the New Testament. Foolishness is, is preaching. And preaching is foolishness, not the message. But the idea of preaching, we'll get that to Chronicles. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. A wise man's heart is at his right hand. Out of the fool's heart is at his left. The wise man's heart is in its place in the Bible, the right hand. Now some people say, you know, you're pretty prejudiced against those people in the left hand. There are more people who are right-handed than there are left-handed. A wise man's sense is in its place, ready to help and protect him. But a fool's sense is missing when it is wanted, and so is useless. I This is my left hand. There it is. I can't use that hand for much. I can't write with it. My right hand has a straight. I'm right-handed. Now, there are people who are right-handed and left-handed. So, for me, the right hand is my strength. 
If I try to use my left hand, it's going to be to a no avail. It's going to be useless. It's going to be perverse. It's going to be crooked. It's going to be weak. As the right hand is normally the best exercise, the strongest, and the most ready, the left is contrary. So, Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. That's the proper place for Jesus Christ. You move Jesus Christ off the right hand of the Father and put something else at the right hand of the Father, Jesus Christ is out of place in your life, and that's foolish. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 3. Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him, and he says to everyone that he is a fool. So when fools walketh by the way, his wisdom, there is wisdom, but it fails. And he proclaims loud and out loud to all, I am a fool. But not in today's politics of America. The fool today is uplifted and put on the front pages. A fool stands out like a sore thumb and no expression. Ecclesiastes 10, 12. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious. Is that wise? But the lips of the fool, there's the fool, will swallow up himself. His own talk eats himself. Opposite of the wise words, but the lips of the fool, which speak everything at random and have no understanding to guide them, are not only not pleasant to others, but often destructive to himself. His discourses are ungracious and offensive to others, and therefore evil to himself. His words are like a cancer. It's like acid. It starts burning. It's like rust. It starts eating him away. And he ends up corroded and destructive. He devours himself as rust would devour metal, as acid would, devour, would conquer it over materials, as a cancer would, would conquer over cells in a body. His lips conquer his own body for shame. Ecclesiastes 10, 13. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolish. And the end of his talk is mischievous madness. When a fool starts his conversation, it is foolish and it is stupid. When he is finished or has finished, it's more finished and with craziness added. How about, let's take an example of this when he starts. There was a big bang. And now today we are here. We have graduated from nothing to here we are today. Everything's getting bigger, bigger and better. And life is so wonderful. And yet we're going to have the entire earth is going to be drowned out with ice. No, the entire earth is going to be drowned out with water. No, the entire earth is going to turn out to be a desert. Oh, we, we have a missing link, but we can't find the fill in there. Uh, we've got this. Look how great man is. We can't explain why this is happening. Where did the Big Bang came from? How did it come from? Nothing. Let's start the tale of the, the mega rock to the big rock to the, the little guy that came out of the water, started walking, and how whales do this, and, and platypus we can't explain. Blah, 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 blah. How about the wise? In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And the end, which there is no end, I saw a new heavens and a new earth and new Jerusalem coming out of heaven from God. How's that? That's not foolish. By the way, evolution is dying. Ecclesiastes 10, 14. A fool also is full of words. 
a man cannot tell when shall be, what shall be, and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? Again, we've run this all the way through. A fool talks too much. Idle words. And Jesus said, every idle word man shall give an account thereof. Fools are going to have a time at their judgment. Saved or lost. Full words, but no wisdom and not knowing God. So, a fool talks with nothing. Full words. And yet a preacher is foolish, isn't he? Is he not full of words? I personally, again, I'm going to speak about what I know myself. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I speak those days of, of teaching the Bible to my family, chapter by chapter. Sometimes I break the chapter down. But on Tuesdays, I try to do uh, the biblical truth of our hymns. On Thursdays, I try to do the fool study. On Wednesdays, we go out and I, I teach in the park the Gospel of John. I try to do other study now that online. I, I do topical. I do the wet cloth thing. I, I do things on topics of the Bible. And then on Saturdays, I preach for about 30 to 45 minutes, if not sometimes longer, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to lost people. On Fridays, if I get somebody who wants to talk and got questions or wants to talk about God, I will try to help them. I talk a lot. Being wise in the wise in the Bible, but yet I'm still foolish because I have a lot of words. And there are many people out there who are lost. There are many people who are saved. My family who will look at the things I do and they'll save their lost and say, that guy's a fool. What is he doing? There are people who look at me and say, that's not what my churches do. You're foolish. And we will get to that, Lord willing, we get to Corinthians. But yes, I am a fool for God, but not in the ways of sinning, but in the ways of wisdom on how the world looks at me. God says, how I love the feet of them that carry the gospel and the world looks at you and you're a fool. But I'm not a fool. They're the fool. One more verse, Ecclesiastes 10, 15. This will finish out the book of Ecclesiastes. The labor of the foolish weareth every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Fools discover their folly by their wearisome and fruitless endeavors after, they, after things which are too high for them. Because he is ignorant of those things which are most easily, as is the way to the great city, whether he's going. Now that sounds hard. A fool, according to this scripture, there's a city. And he sees the city. And he'll do everything he can do to get to that city, and he never ends up there. This is religion in disguise. I see heaven. I see that preacher says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But I'm going to do whatever I do as a fool. Whatever religion tells me to do, whatever I tell myself to do. Whether my priest, my guru, my preacher, my whatever I am. I'm going to do the foolish way. There is heaven, but I'm not going to make it. Because I didn't listen to God, and I didn't listen to the Bible, and I did not listen to the Christian that God sent to me. That's foolish. When you work your whole life in foolishness, and when you come to the end, you do not make what you tried. There are tons and tons of religious people in hell today, and many more that will go. And when they open up themselves, their eyes in hell, they're like, 
Why am I here? Because you're a fool. You disregarded the roadblock that God set up to do your own thing, to do their own way, to go about the way that's not of God. That's foolish. That's the man, and I did this one time in Boston, that's the man that will not stop at the gas station or at some place and say, can you tell me how to get there? It's foolish. It's prideful. How dare I pull over and go ask for direction? How dare I listen to God? That's foolish. That ought not to be so.